All right, so in this series of videos, I'm going to show you how to take multiple OBJ uh, 3D model files and turn them into a nodal 3D PDF. So what's a nodal 3D PDF? Um, as you can see, we have a 3D PDF here. We can move uh, these objects around uh, all at the same time. Um, and we also have the option to turn those objects on and off. So by clicking on this tree to the left, um, we can make objects visible or not visible. And so in this case, we have a refit, and that's uh, a really handy feature, because if we want, we can just see this removal and look at that removal on its own. Uh, or alternatively, we can just see the core. Um, and you can imagine if we have a sequence that's a refit, uh, by clicking things off in the correct order, we can see what that, you know, uh, stone nodule would have looked like uh, throughout all sorts of uh, the parts of that uh, reduction process. Okay. Here you can see uh, the workflow we're going to do to create this nodal 3D PDF. So first of all, we're going to take our individual OBJ files, and then we're going to import them into this program called DAS3D. Um, and what this program allows us to do is sort of control uh, variables about how those OBJs are displayed. It's going to combine all those files together into a single U3D file. Uh, and then we're going to use Adobe Acrobat to create that final 3D PDF. All right, let's get started here. I'm just going to open DAS Studio. We can just X out of this guy. All right, and so the first thing uh, logically we're going to do is import all of those files. So we can go to File, Import. Uh, and as you can see, I have these numbered in the order um, I'd like to import them. So it's really important to import files in the correct order because the way you import them will be the way, if I open up the 3D PDF again, they display. So if you have sort of a refit sequence uh, and you want you know, the removal first, the second removal second, etc. You need to import those files uh, in that same order into DAS3D. So I'm going to go and import my first one, um, and you can only import them one at a time. I'm going to leave all of these uh, import options on their defaults, and so just say accept. Okay, and you'll notice these are a little coming in weird. Uh, that's because I want to show you how to fix some problems, so ignore that for the time being while I import these other two guys. And then finally, our third one. Okay, um, and if you see that it's a little hard to see those objects from your current view, uh, you can rotate by clicking this cube up here, um, or you can pan by clicking right here on these arrows, symbols, and just drag up. Okay, so as you can see, things are displaying um, a little funky, and that's because it's uh, DAS3D is importing material properties from um, whatever we were using last. So for example, this guy uh, here, Removal 1, uh, it was in GeoMagic, and the base color was green, so it's popping up green. Uh, this OBJ file, which is our core, um, actually if you export files from certain programs such as 3ds Max and then import them into DAS, they will automatically import as transparent, um, which means you can't see them. So I'll show you how to fix that. Um, and in this case, here is our one centimeter scale cube. It hasn't correctly imported the texture because the texture has kind of a funky name. So I'll show you how to fix all of these problems. Okay, so to change the material properties, we're going to just click on either the model we want here, or you can also click on its name um, in this menu in the upper left. And then here in the window in the lower right, we're going to click its name again, and this shows then all of those material properties. And most of these you don't have to worry about. Um, but right, we want to change these diffuse, specular, and ambient colors to things that are more neutral. So what I'm going to do is change diffuse to this light gray color. I'm going to do the same for the specular. Uh, and then ambient, I'm going to turn that to black. Okay, and so now you can see we have a pretty normal colored looking uh, flake, um, but I'm going to do two other things. So glossiness and specular strength sort of refer to how much light is going to bounce off of this in 
you know, our artificial 3D environment. So I'm going to bump both of those down to just 5%. And by doing that, our objects aren't going to look too glossy uh, and shiny, um, but you'll also be able to sort of see the details nice and it'll look a you know, sort of normal color. Um, but you can sort of experiment with that um, in your own models as well. All right, so I'm going to click the core. I'm going to do the same thing, selecting those materials. Um, and the first thing we want to do down here is the opacity strength, and it's currently at 0. I'm going to drag that up to 100, and then I'm going to do the same thing, change the diffuse and specular colors to gray, and ambient is already black, so I can leave that, and then change glossiness and specular strength to 5. Okay, so that's looking pretty much like it does in real life. Uh, and then here, our scale cube, uh, we're missing the texture. So I'm going to click on that, click on these properties. Um, and then for diffuse here, you can see this lower pointing uh, sort of upside down triangle. I'm going to click that, click browse. Um, and in this folder where I've saved everything, I'm just going to click on the appropriate texture. And that'll put the texture on there. Um, also, if you're using a scale cube and you need to sort of move it around, um, if you click on the scale cube, and then you can click on these X, Y, and Z arrows, so once they become highlighted in yellow, uh, you can move that, you know, wherever uh, you need it to be. So I'm just going to move it a little further over. Okay, so things are looking pretty good. And now we can export this as our U3D file format. So I'm going to say File, Export, and I'm just going to call this Demo and say save. Um, and then it's going to give us a few options here. So the first one is resample maps. Um, and what this will do is make any texture maps you have uh, smaller. So in this case, um, I've made these models using photogrammetry. And the texture maps originally I assigned were pretty big. So they were over 4,000 pixels per side. We don't really need that for the 3D PDF, and it's going to take up a ton of space. So I'm going to say let's resample that down to 1024. Um, you can go smaller than that, um, depending on how important the detail of that texture is going to be to your final model, uh, you know, how big the file needs to be or how small it needs to be, etc. Um, and then I'm just going to not have export lights or cameras clicked, since in this case I don't have any. And we can just say OK. All right, and that's it. Um, and in the second video, I'll show you how to take that U3D file format and make a 3D PDF.